In the 1950s, high-scoring Dolph Shays made the Syracuse Nationals one of the NBA's top teams. He also played in 706 consecutive games, making him basketball's original Iron Man. I had the ability to hang in the air. Pitchin' Paul Arizon was a two-time NBA scoring leader. His jump shot took the game off the ground and changed the way it would be played. Mixing talent with tenacity, Bob Pettit was one of the league's greatest forwards. Over the course of his career, he averaged 26 points and 16 rebounds. But Pettit retired at age 32, saying he could no longer meet his own high standards. Taking the forward position to a new level was Elgin Baylor, an explosive scorer. He also had the ability to float in midair, bringing a totally new dimension to the game. I just uh, play the only brand of basketball, the type of basketball I knew how. But looking back today, over 23,000 points and 11 all-star appearances later, perhaps not even Elgin himself is sure exactly how he did it. The 1960s also brought the arrival of Jerry Lucas, who turned the blue-collar work of rebounding into an art form. In Philadelphia, Billy Cunningham delivered offensive firepower for the 76ers, averaging 20 points and 10 rebounds a game over his illustrious career. I always felt that, uh, you know, I could run and run and run, and someone all told me one time, you will pass out before you injure yourself. And John Havlicek kept on running for 16 seasons, his tireless play earning him the nickname Hondo. When he was through, he'd scored over 26,000 points and starred on eight Celtic championship teams. Hard, oh, and Greer's putting the ball on a play. He gets it out deep, and Havlicek steals it! Entering the 70s, Elvin Hayes ushered in a brand new era for the NBA. A power forward who played with finesse, the Big E was one of the league's most dominant and durable players. When the New York Knicks acquired Dave DeBuscher, they found the missing ingredient that produced two NBA titles. One of the game's standout defensive forwards, DeBuscher controlled the boards and was also a clutch player on offense for those Knicks teams. When I was out there, I was in another world. I was totally immersed in that world. All of my focus was there. Rick Barry brought a world of skills to the forward position. During a brilliant 14-year career, he excelled in every phase of the game, once even leading the league in steals. But above all, he was an offensive machine, and he is the only player to have ever led the NCAA, the ABA, and the NBA in scoring. With an improvisational style all his own, Julius Irving was simply the doctor. He stretched the game's creative limits and seemingly defied the laws of gravity on his way to becoming the third leading scorer in basketball history. I really considered those routine plays, although I know they were beyond the boundaries that one would call uh, fundamental. The evolutionary trail of forwards continued with Boston's Kevin McHale, whose twisting, contortionist moves in the low post completely frustrated his opponents. He used his worm move. There was the sleek yet powerful quickness of the Lakers' James Worthy, so often found at the finishing end of a Showtime fast break. The emphatic deliveries of the mailman, Utah's Carl Malone. The, the dynamic athleticism and versatility of Chicago's Scotty Pippen. And the irresistible force known respectfully as Sir Charles, Charles Barkley. Barkley. I've always felt that anytime I step on the basketball court, if you give it 100% every day, uh, good things are going to happen. They said he couldn't run and couldn't jump. But what became evident about Larry Bird was that he also could not be stopped. If it comes down to one shot, I want to be the guy to take it. Bird, 